Welcome back to SoundersFC.com. Hi again, everyone. Tony Ventrella, Pete Fewing, Insider Matt Gash, got Fado Irish Pub at 801 First Avenue in Seattle. Been here for 11 years. Great place. They've got rugby here, all kinds of soccer, day and night. Check it out. The website. On the television. Really on the TV. They no, there's guys playing, playing in the room next door. Wow, well, it's oh, big yeah. enough. It's big <laughs> enough. A lot of things to talk about on this uh, edition of Roundtable. Also, we'll have a couple of members of Gorilla FC here. We think the second largest support group in the area with over 300 members. We'll get them in here in just a minute. But first, I want to talk about this hot August streak. Not the weather, but the record. Sounders FC 7-0-1. Can they keep it going, Matt Gash? Yeah, well, you certainly hope they can. And, and it's nice that they had this little break here with a big stretch of games coming up. And uh, it really was pretty remarkable. I mean, uh, you know, Pete and I were just talking about it b before we went on about you know, the separation of, of, of all these different games. And I think, uh, Pete, you can kind of take it from there, kind of. Um, they're worse. I mean, three different competitions, and, and they didn't skip a beat. No. And there was separate motivation for each of them as yeah, they this is Yeah, this is great coaching. Because when the season's this long, you have to have ways to motivate for each game. So if you go back five games, you go to the Comunicaciones game, it's a CONCACAF game, it's at home. You got to win in the CONCACAF at home uh, to you know, make your chances good to win the whole thing. This is right? Ziggy talking to this his guys. This is Ziggy guys, talking to his guys. The next one, uh, they're uh, Dallas, right? They're on the road with Dallas. And so that's for second place. Who gets the, who's going to end up in the second place? They've been able to hold that since then. So there's the motivation on that. The third one was an interesting one. Sends Keller home, sends Montero home, sends Rosales home. They go to Monterey, win, lose, draw. They don't really care. They would just want to get back. Right, but at halftime they're up one nothing on the Fernandez goal. Evans was going to sub out at halftime. Freeberg at halftime. Ziggy goes to both of them, says, "Can you go?" They say they can. They get away with a win. They come back now two and zero in Concacaf. Fantastic, right? So then the next one is Columbus, and now Columbus is leading the East. So we're going to send a message to the league. We're going to show how strong the West is, and they thump Columbus six two. I don't think they planned six two, but it worked. Not right? a new message, yeah. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And then and then the next one is. It's the semifinal for the U.S. Open Cup. So they got Dallas at Starfire, right? They've not, what are they, 17 and 15 wins and a tie at Starfire and one on PKs. And, and so now they're in the U.S. Open Cup finals. So five games, each with its own plot. Ziggy's done a very good job of keeping the guys on task. Yeah, you know, the last team to, to, to really even compete right. against yeah. What was, was Pete's team. I think that's right. Except that's Who why was? we're pulling for, yeah. Right. We think we're second place if the Sounders win the U.S. Open Cup. Yeah, I don't know how that works We can out. figure it out. we got a trophy that we're working There's on. There's right a now. computer somewhere <laughs> a second place. that can be rigged <laughs> so that that actually happens. Uh, Real Salt Lake coming up next. A big match this weekend, 1 o'clock, uh, over at Century Link. Uh, what about this? They've got some guys coming back that have been uh, on loan to their national team. Right. They've been. Uh, they've got Will Johnson away with Canada, who's going to be playing against uh, Costa Rica. They've got, uh, um, oh, goodness. <laughs> Alave? Alave. Borchers? No, 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 I'm sorry. You guys uh, are on loan. Uh, Beckerman is, okay. was with the U.S. in their game against Belgium. And, uh, and uh, for Costa Rica, I'm sorry, the uh, uh, Alvaro Sabarillo yeah. is, uh, is away with Costa Rica. Um, Canada playing against Puerto Rico, rather, not Costa Rica. So, um, But, yeah, those three yeah, guys. You've had a couple days off. It's I okay. Have, I have. <laughs> Through those three guys are away with their national teams. They'll be all flying back from different parts of the world. And um, Salt Lake's have been a great team. I mean, they, they've been uh, one of the more competitive teams um, the Sounders have faced um, throughout the three years. So let, let me ask you this, then we'll co come back to you, Matt. What, so what's the motivation here, then? Just the fact that this is a, a, a very competitive team right. in our conference? or what? Uh, well, they what wanna, one, they want to keep what's gone yeah. on the last seven games. They want to keep that going. They want to keep ahead of Dallas. They want that second spot, and they want to start putting a little more pressure on Los Angeles, LA tied uh, last night. So that's great for Seattle because they can get a chance to get a little bit closer now. So the motivation is within the West to continue to stay as close to LA and start to get closer to uh, maybe getting that first place spot. And that winning streak too, keep that winning Yeah, streak absolutely. They, they've uh, on a five game winning streak in, uh, in all competitions, six would be the team record. So uh, matching their team record. So six straight wins, uh, you know, helping roll that momentum into September. Yeah, you know, you know, Tony, when you have a break like they just had, they certainly earned the break. They left on a perfect note, but uh, this is a mature team, but they got to get right back sure, on track. Sure. There can't be a dip because of the break. Yeah. You know, speaking of momentum, let's bring in, let's bring in Katie and, and Lickett from uh, Gorilla FC. Now we were going to have 
the gorilla here, but that's the gorilla chicken out is what you're telling me. he had to work, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, Matt's got, some, got a prize for you. Go ahead. Great, I've got uh, four tickets to our game on Saturday against Real Salt Lake, and uh, you guys have done so much in the community lately, and I thought it'd be good if you guys were able to uh, use those as a way to kind of uh, generate interest in Gorilla FC. Thank you, thank you. So you guys can uh, give those away as you see fit. What's the yeah. plan? Do you have a thought about that? Uh, I think we'll do a Twitter contest. We'll, we'll announce on our Gorilla FC uh, Twitter account uh, and we'll ask uh, what Siv's favorite Sounders player is. Okay. So, so just follow Siv. them at Gorilla FC and, uh, yeah. and they'll have the, uh, the Twitter question there for you. Yeah. Now you guys are a, f a very fast growing group. You just started three years ago, right? We started in 2009, so we have about 300 members now. Wow, that's yeah. outstanding. And it's, yeah. did it start with you two or three or how many? Um, it started with Kevin Zelko, a group of people played soccer and their whole thing was Gorilla. And then it kind of transformed into a supporters group once the Sounders came aboard. So, Does yeah. the general public know who the banana is yeah. and who the gorilla is? <laughs> yes, they do. Okay, yeah. they do. Okay, yeah. who, who is the banana? That would be me. <laughs> <laughs> Dress like a banana for the game. Yes. So you've got to respect yes. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That yeah. is wonderful. You do, you yeah. do have to respect that. You really do. <laughs> Katie Lickett, thank you very much. Congratulations yeah. for... Uh, Getting that group growing so fast. Your shirt, your shirt says Church of Facito. That's right. Very nice. In the name of the Father, Son, and Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, just a reminder, we're at uh, Fidel Irish Pub here on First Avenue. Uh, a couple things to still talk about. I know, Matt, you wanted to bring up uh, Moral Rosales' name uh, and uh, the term MVP in the same right. sentence. Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, I definitely think he's in, in the running for newcomer of the year. Um, there's definitely some, some good competition there. Guys like uh, Fareed Mondragon with, with uh, Philly, their goalkeeper, uh, and some other uh, Charlie Davies as well um, with DC United. But, but Mar Mauro Rosales is a guy you got to start considering for the MVP. Five goals, nine assists. Um, you know, other guys in the running, you got to think about Breck Shea, Landon Donovan. You can't have an MVP conversation in MLS without mentioning Landon Donovan. Um, you know, David Beckham is, is, is inching his way closer as well. But, uh, but Mauro Rosales, with the way he's playing, if he can keep it up here over the next uh, six, seven games they've got remaining, um, you know, you got to think that he's going to be in the, in the running, at least one of the top couple candidates for MVP. But this guy's a coach's dream, too. Yes, right? absolutely. He is, because he's, he, uh, what I think he's done is he's extended uh, Casey Keller's influence yeah. to the, the 10 on the field. And he is a coach's dream. He speaks very good English. He, he speaks Spanish so he can communicate and bridge the gap. Yeah. Uh, he's an intelligent guy. He's a passionate guy. You know, I, I still remember his first touch. It wasn't the best touch. It was on about 35 yard line. It went a few yards away, straight to the carpet to go get it back. So he's not afraid. He, he's not afraid to roll his sleeves up in battle. And I, we've seen games where he's gone 90 minutes and knowing that he's going to go 90 minutes in a couple more days. So he's just been, he can, he can score, uh, he can get assists, and he's not afraid to do the dirty work to get the ball back. And I hate to bring this up, but, uh, you know, Ziggy had a player from Argentina who uh, did those types of things for him with the Columbus crew, Guillermo barros Cerloto, and yeah. uh, there are definite comparisons between those two, definite parallels between those two players. They play the game a little bit differently, but they're, they are the, the, uh, the, straw, the straw that stirs the drink, so yeah. to speak, uh, for the team, and, and uh, definitely... Uh, <laughs> he's, he's thin, too. You know what? He, what? We asked him early on in one of our uh, conversations with him. He, he gets hit and he doesn't go onto the ground very long. And he just says, part of the game, you gotta get back up and play. And I love that about him too. I think that represents the Seattle fans, right? They're willing to battle. Uh, and if he gets hit, he doesn't milk it. He's up and he's fighting again. I like to see, need to see more of that in the league actually. But that's another story. Peter, thank you very much. Matt Gash, our Sounders FC insider. Lickett, Katie, thanks for joining us from Gorilla FC. We're at uh, Fado Irish Pub on First Avenue. That's it for this edition of the Sounders Roundtable. I'm Tony Ventrella. See you next time. The Sounders are proud to partner with Special Olympics as we spread the word to end the word. I'm James Riley. When I hear people use the R word, retard, I think of my friend Stuart, a Special Olympics athlete who has an intellectual disability. Please join my teammates and me and take the pledge to stop using the R word. It hurts Stuart and it hurts the team. Sign the pledge today at the Special Olympics booth in soccer celebration on the main concourse. Spread the word to end the word. Thank you.